Uh, hello everybody, welcome to IA Command TV Boy here. We've got another Vassal replay game for you guys. This is a IACP game. Uh, just thought I'd get this in here before we get to Season 3. And this game was actually recorded um, not too long ago, about November 24th. So the uh, weekend before Thanksgiving. And this game is actually between Tuca and Director D. So... And a game that I was not party to, uh, but I managed to luckily walk in just, uh, you know, walk in on the game just as they were starting and able to get, get it logged. So we've got Tuca up on the upper left playing uh, the double Nexu list, which Tuca has said has been doing quite well for him, apparently um, undefeated, at least going into this game with uh, Beast Tamer. Nexu is getting an upgrade in IACP with plus one damage and plus one health. Uh, he's got Beast Tamer, Hondo, Vinto, BT1, R2D2, and C3PO, and uh, Elite Jawa and a regular Jawa, bringing him to nine activations. And he is playing against Director D, who is playing an interesting list. Uh, he has got Boba Fett, who is very strong in IACP. Another one of the uh, stronger figures that people have been saying might actually be too strong. And this is happening, this game is occurring after the recent nerf in IACP where Boba got his custom command card that was made for him banned uh, until further notice for being a little too strong. And uh, Director D's running Boba alongside another 12 point figure here, IG88. So we've got two queen pieces and. He's actually up to seven activations with his list. He's got uh, an Elite Jawa, a regular Jawa, Greedo, C-3PO, and Chopper. No Headhunter, but he does have Black Market. And I will mention that Tuka also has extra armor in his list, which he uh, tends to put on his Nexus to make them just that much more survivable. So we walked in a little bit midway through round one in this game. From what I was able to deduce, looking at the board, it looks like we have Director D with initiative, most likely passed on the first uh, first round. Tuca going with R two D two, moving him onto that terminal. Uh, Director D passing. Tuca most likely activating C three PO here to focus uh, his Nexu. And with that, since R two is on the terminal, Director D went ahead and did a system shock. And Tuka took the damage, the strain as damage, taking three damage on R2 D2. And then we've got uh, most likely Director D, or excuse me, Tuka activating his Jawa, moving it down to the door there. Um, and I should mention that we are playing the, or the player, these players are playing on the Triple Cross Gangster Mission, where you kill gangsters to get three points. And uh, not a lot of shots going on, mostly just support activations early on here. Uh, so after Tuka activates his Elite Jawa, we've got Director D most likely activating his 3PO, focusing Greedo. Uh, then we've got Tuka uh, activating Jawa, activating his regular Jawa, looks like moving it to the speeder car there. And then finally we had Director D activating his elite Jawa, moving it up and taking a shot at the gangster closest to him, uh, doing two damage with the dice roll you can see there. And then I believe we have BT, Tuka's BT activated and I'm guessing it did the five damage to that gangster closest to Tuka's deployment zone. So now we are on Director D's activation uh, who has Boba IG and Greedo left. So I believe we are about to see. Now we can go ahead and get this game started. So Director D attacking the gangster with uh, IG here, I believe. Taking a little bit of a long shot. Does five damage, which uh, is enough to kill it with the two damage that was already on it from the Jawa attack. And it's going to get Director D three points on the board. And it's going to end with his IG-88 right there next to C-3PO for that nice defensive bonus. 
uh, which could matter with these Nexus. They can go so fast. So we've got uh, Tuka activating Hondo to attack, I believe, to attack a gangster. Although, oh, he must be attacking the middle gangster. He does not have line of sight to the one closest to him. And it makes sense to attack the middle gangster here because Hondo, uh, his ability is that the target of the attack can either pay victory points or take plus two damage from Hondo's attack. And of course, these gangsters are neutral figures and they don't have any victory points to pay. So that plus two damage is going to cancel out the plus two blocks that the gangsters get automatically. And yep, confirmation we are attacking the middle gangster here. So that is going to be five damage. And these guys have six health, so that's going to be one short of getting that kill. And going to leave that gangster uh, very exposed to uh, a shot from Director D now, who is activating Boba. And it looks like Boba's going to take a shot on that middle gangster to finish it off. And that's a f not a focused attack, just Boba using his ability to get an to get a green die uh, ICP and this is season 2.2 by the way in ICP Boba uh, now has the ability to choose the color of his third die on top of a blue and a green so that's gonna get that gangster middle gangster for director T putting him well ahead uh, in this early stage of the game six to zero and now we're gonna see one of the next who's activating and it's going to be the non-focus Nexu. And these guys are mobile. Uh, hard for them to navigate type corners, but very fast with speed 6 and mobile. And what we're li most likely going to see with these 9 activations is uh, Tuka activating that, that second Nexu last to do a deep strike with a free move from Beast Tamer and a uh, pounce on top of his normal move and right now with director D having the initiative this is exactly what Tuka wants he's gonna get that last activation and then hopefully keep the initiative going into round two to activate the next two again uh, immediately so we've got uh, director D activating his regular Jawa just kind of throwing it out there um, but this uh, this is actually going to be a very important maneuver. Uh, what he's doing here is he is controlling. To, uh, Director D knows what's going to happen with this Nexu. And one of the ways you can kind of control the Nexu is to um, crowd out their placement using cheap figures. And because of how Director D has placed that Jawa, um, this Nexu is not going to really be able to fit anywhere where it can actually do a ton of damage to one of Director D's more important figures. It'll have to basically stop short and only be able to attack a Jawa. And importantly, it's not going to be able to get the cleave that um, Tuka wants with all of the, the Nexus attacks. So, uh, so we've got the extra armor tokens are going on the Nexus. Now we've got Vinto activating for Tuka. And he's just going to take a shot with um, his double attack on that one health gangster and takes it down, getting Tuka that three points and getting him on the board. And we've got Greedo activating for Director D moving right up, right up front. And of course, that is going to mean that if Tuka wants to get to the uh, queen pieces of Director D in the back, he'll have to chew through Greedo first and take a parting shot for his troubles. So here's the last activation of the round. It's going to be that next two. Using Beast Tamer means it gets to move 12 spaces and then it can pounce for three. Basically a five space move with a pounce if you're doing um, diagonally. And we're and but of course because of the way Director D has placed his figures here, that Nexus is only going to be able to attack the Jawa here and not going to get any cleave. So we've got Nexu attacking a regular Jawa, and this is a focus Nexu, and they do have a surge for plus two damage, and inherent plus one damage in IACP. 
uh, Director D go using the uh, take cover ability of the Jawa to remove um, to apply minus one evade for a plus one block. So we're gonna see looks like about four damage going through on this Jawa, and that's a regular Jawa with only three health. So that's two points for Tuka. Um, but that cleave two and bleed not doing much here. And it looks like with its remaining, has two remaining movement points to move up adjacent to uh, Chopper and Greedo. So that's the end of the round. Now we're going to see, um, and the other, the other strong thing about this, this Nexu list is um, he is denying Director D that draw from his terminal thanks to controlling it. So now we've got a gangster coming in at the end of the round going to deploy up at the top right which means it's going to do two damage to that nexu since the nexu is the closest figure within line of sight of that gangster uh, and that two damage is definitely going to help uh that is not what tuka wants uh the nexus are just durable enough that it's hard to kill them and they can usually escape with one or two health left but the uh two damage definitely changes the math on that so now we've got Director D is using Black Market, and he's going to take a damage. Um, I'm not sure which smuggler he's taking a damage on here, but he's going to flip Celebration and gets to draw that by spending zero victory points. And that is going to be it for the end of round. Initiative moving back to Tuca, or over to Tuca for round two. And let me just scroll this down. No start around for Tuca and nothing for Director D. So that means that this next is going to get be able to activate here. <coughs> Exhausting Beast Tamer. And we're going to get a Pummel, which is exactly what Tuca wants. Uh, Nexus very good at getting extra attacks with things like Pummel and like Ferocity. So that end of round, start of round um, spin is very good. So that's going to be two attacks. First attack going in against Chopper. And it looks like he's going to do exactly five damage through two blocks, uh, which is going to kill Chopper. And next two gets an automatic cleave two, which is going to cleave onto Greedo. And I love this play here, Disorient. So when a figure suffers, hostile figure suffers damage, you get to discard a beneficial condition, and that figure suffers two strain. So that cleave allows uh, Tuka to trigger disorient, which is super important because because it's cleave, um, he's gonna do that and get to strip Greedo's focus uh, before Greedo would get a chance to attack with parting gift or parting shot. And we're going to see Scout the Messenger, or Shoot the Messenger come down and strip three cards off the top of Director D's deck here with the death of Chopper. And that's going to take Take Initiative, Blaze of Glory, and Director D's own copy of Disorient. And seeing Blaze of Glory get stripped off into the discard pile is not, not a good sign. Although... Uh, if you play IG smart, you don't always need it. Need to blaze to win. And now we've got the Nexu making its second attack with Pummel. Uh, doesn't get to spend any movement points from Beast Tamer until the two Pummel attacks are done. But uh, he's going after Greedo here. And that is going to be a dead Greedo who gets to attack but is not focused any longer because of Disorient. Uh, Nexu spending a block power token and with cunning gets an extra block from an evade so it's going to be two damage on the Nexu taking it down to five health and now because it used beast tamer it gets to retreat back um, not completely to safety but to a spot where director D will have to move his figures out to get line of sight to it Alright, so now we've got 
that was pretty devastating. That was nine points for Tuca. But more importantly, or almost as importantly, is that took away three activations from Director D all before they even got to activate in round two. <coughs> so Director D is going to have to catch up here. C-3PO is going to start him off for round two and focus up Boba. Tuka is going to activate R2-D2 and get to heal with Scomp Link, or draw card and heal with repair. And uh, losing Chopper was really rough there for Director D because now that damage that he did to R2 is basically useless. Um, kind of makes you think that maybe having R2-D2 in your list would be a little bit better since a dead R2-D2 would at least give you an extra card in your hand. But Chopper does have his charms. And does certainly do things that R2-D2 cannot do. So, back to our Director D. Down to just three activations remaining. He's going to pass. Tuka's going to activate his 3PO and uh, focus up Hondo here. And another pass from Director D. Regular Jawa for Tuka is going to open that door by the speeder and then move to block line of sight to the elite Jawa and the Nexu. And nice thing about the replay is we don't have to wait for breaks. So now Jawa Scavenger Elite for Tuka. Again, Director D passing with less activations than Tuka. So Elite Jawa moving into the safety of the T area up in the north. No more passing for Director D, so looks like. Oh, never mind. He got he, got, he has one more pass. So Tuka activating Hondo here. Looks like he's gonna take a shot at that gangster. With plus two damage. That's going to be a dead gangster for Tuka. Putting him at 15. Director D is going to have to catch up here. Um, he's going to activate Boba. And now we get to see. And this is why I was really happy I caught this game. Is because uh, Boba versus the Nexus. Boba is one of the more powerful figures in IACP. So we'll get to see him do his thing. Um, we've got a flamethrower hitting the Nexu for for uh, two damage, one damage and a strain. And more importantly, it's going to weaken the Nexu, which is going to be really good against its cunning ability. Um, flamethrower lets Boba tri trigger opportunistic, giving him three movement points, which is really good because in ICP, Boba has all these extra abilities that are used by spending movement points so opportunistic great card with boba to help him give him more movement points to spend on his abilities <coughs> and now we've got a wrist rocket and you can see up in the top right which of boba's abilities have been used this round since they are each limited to once per round so he's going to do a wrist rocket on the nexu which basically lets him roll a red die against any figure in his line of sight within four spaces and that figure suffers the damage and a nice roll it means a dead nexu here without having to waste an attack uh, or open himself up to being dodged so that's going to get him six points but that nexu definitely earned its points already um, a six point nexu getting nine points of kills Tuka's is probably pretty happy with that exchange so uh, Boba's got two movement points left here. Looks like he's going to take a shot at 3PO. Focused attack. 3PO rolls a blank. Can still re-roll with Cower though. And he doesn't get the dodge he would need to survive. So that's a dead 3PO. And that actually brings uh, Director D up to 14 to Tuka's 15. So this game is tied up almost again. Oh, Director D remembers to play his celebration 
which he drew off of Black Market. But Tuca's got the negation. He um, Definitely a good idea to, I think, Celebration. Most people talk about using your negation just on something like Take Initiative or Rebel Graffiti, but uh, whenever I get the chance, I always negate a Celebration. That card is just so powerful. Four, move, four victory points for no cost. Too good. And uh, with those two movement points, Boba moves back into cover by his terminal. And now we've got Tuca activating Vinto. It looks like he's moving... Just moving closer. And then the Elite Jawa activating for Director D. It's going to move up and take a shot, long shot at uh, Tuka's regular Jawa. Looks like one, two, like seven spaces away. But you know, might as well take the shot that's offered. That's going to do a whole lot of nothing. Um, could get up to six accuracy, but would have zero damage. So it's gonna be a miss. Um, but with that extra surge, he is gonna use bargain, or Director D is gonna use bargain, so he can spend a victory point and roll a green die, and for each damage showing, he gets a victory point back. And unfortunately, he gets the zero. Um, pretty unfortunate one out of six there, but I would definitely say that bargain is something you should be using often. It's just most of the time you will either gain nothing or gain a victory point for free. And it's worth, well worth the risk of, uh, one in six losing a victory point, I think. So... Now we've got Tuka activating BT1. BT1 only change in ICP is he costs five now instead of six. Just gonna move him a little closer to the action, but keeping him in cover behind that uh, blocking terrain there. And now we got Director D's final activation is gonna be to activate IG, and IG's gonna try and succeed where his Elite Jawa failed to kill this regular Jawa, and using his uh epic arsenal ability to roll two blues in addition to being focused from focused on the kill and that's going to do exactly enough damage three damage to kill that jawa with the plus two accuracy built in for uh, ig and that ties up the game 15 to 15 director d boxing up quite well um, forming a little box around 3PO, trying to make do with what he's got left, but doing quite well for himself. And now for the final activation, again, Tuka is going to activate this Nexu. Already used Beast Teamer, but because of where he positioned him last turn, not going to need him in order to get all the way over to Director D's figures with a pounce. But again, because of the way Director D positioned, uh, this Nexu can't really fit. So in such a way that it can get a uh, cleave action going. And he's going to have to attack uh, Director D's tankiest figure, which is Boba. So here comes the attack on Boba. Boba's got that built-in plus one block, plus one evade, which is really great. Uh, extra dice there. That red dice shouldn't be there. But it looks like we've got five minus two. So three damage on Boba. Um, who also takes a bleed, which is part of the Nexus attack. And that's going to be the end of round two. Got initiative going back to Director D. Gangster's going to appear first. And another gangster that's going to do two damage to, uh, to Tuka's Nexu. Unfortunate, but uh, looks like there was about only... Uh, it looks like there's a 3 and 4 chance that at least one of Tuka's figures would take damage from a gangster here. <coughs> and uh, Tuka has a chance to move this gangster. 
Looks like he's going to move it closer to um, Vento. And we've got Director D using uh, Black Market at the end of the round here. Reveals New Orders. Very spicy card in this list with the Jawa, who is a leader. And it looks like Director D is going to take it. That is a pricey card. Going to spend three points on it. Most likely thinking that um, getting an extra activation out of IG or Boba is going to be a good way to come back in this game. But also very risky because his only leader in his list right now is the Jawa. So if that gets taken out, that's going to be not only a dead card in his hand, but a three point, three victory point costing dead card. And Duke has got the take initiative, but Director D's got the negation. Um, unfortunately, though, because of the way New Orders works, he can't just like snap it off right away. He has to activate one of his figures first. And then hope his Jawa survives whatever Tuka activates with. So IG is going to activate first. He's going to use Toxic Dart, uh, which deals a strain to a target within, I believe, three spaces and also weakens it. So uh, Tuka is going to take that strain uh, from the deck. He discards heightened reflexes from the top. And. Uh, this weekend is going to be way more important because it stops the Nexus cunning ability, which is uh, for each evade it rolls, it gets an extra block, which is really a big part of its tankiness. And now IG is attacking and Tuka taking a card again instead of taking damage uh, and loses Vinto's card draw, which gives him a free attack. And uh, here we go. That weekend is going to take away an evade as well as the block it would have provided with the block token. Nexu is going to take three damage here. <coughs> Pretty modest roll from IG there, but uh, without a reroll. Sometimes IG just, his rolls just aren't that great, even for three dice. But uh, he has Assault, so he can make up for it. And again, Tuka losing another card from the top of the deck. This time gets rid of a Ferocity. This next has only got 4 health, though, and it's weakened. And uh, IG rolls pretty good here. So that's going to take out the Nexu and shoot Director D into the lead with uh, 18 to 15. And now with IG in a nice position to get a uh, new orders from the Jawa. But Tuka is well aware of this and is going to move Vinto up and take shots at the elite Jawa with rapid fire. And the Jawa gets a plus one evade thanks to 3PO and can then turn that into a plus one block with take cover. And it's only going to take one damage, uh, leaving him at three health left. Vinto Bolt Slingers onto Boba to do a one extra damage to him. And now he's going to attack this Jawa again. And this time he's going to make sure he finishes the job and use Element of Surprise to remove that Jawa's defense dice. Uh, which is really effective against Vinto, who's only rolling two dice, so... This time, Vinto is going to finish the job. Gets a nice three points. Again, evening up the score, but more importantly, uh, denying Director D the chance to use new orders in his hand that he paid three victory points for. So, a small figure to kill there, basically, but um, really big in terms of tempo and value. So uh, Director D is going to activate his 3PO down to just two activations here. Move up and focus Boba. And is now providing Boba with a nice uh, distracting bonus. And uh, BT1 activating, moving up and using its own copy of Toxic Dart. Some uh, 
pretty cool cards being played and actually being played by both players. Um, that's going to weaken Boba. And it looks like Boba's going to take the strain as a card and discards worth every credit from the top of the deck of Director D's command deck. And let's see. We've got an attack coming in from BT. So even though Boba's weakened, he's going to get an extra evade from both his card and from 3PO. So one of those will cancel out the weaken. And we've got tools from the job. Tools for the job for BT1, who is going to be rolling five dice here. Two reds and one of each color. Pretty bad roll for BT, though. Um, which kind of just happens with BT a lot if you don't give him some kind of re-roll or something. He can just roll really bad. Um, and does three damage to Boba. Tuka most likely hoping for a lot more damage with that attack. Uh, had Having spent two command cards there. Alright, so now we've got Boba activating. So Boba's going to take a move as his first action. And since he's bleeding, he's going to lose a card to a strain. And now uh, using his movement points, first thing he's going to do is use the weaponized stim ability. And what that does is it lets Boba remove a harmful condition from himself or from an adjacent figure. Or it lets him um, give himself or an adjacent figure a power token. Uh, so now he's going to use Flamethrower here. And he's going to do target BT1 and Vinto. So each of them are going to take a damage and a strain. And ouch, Tuka loses on the lamb to that strain as well as black market prices. Uh, yeah, it can be hard to remember sometimes which cards are left in your deck. And it should definitely influence like whether you take strain as damage. So Bobo's gonna go ahead and use his wrist rocket here, targeting Vinto. Gets one damage, so not great, but sometimes it just doesn't work out. And now Boba's going to take a focus shot at Vinto. Losing a surge from Weekend, but he's got more than enough. Uh, and because Vinto was also weakened by Boba's flamethrower, <coughs> he's going to lose that surge cancel. And that's going to be definitely enough to kill Vinto here. And now we've got Director D back in the lead. D great back and forth game here. Um, so Boba should still have, no, Boba move, used all of his movement points. Um, oh no, he should still have, yeah, he moved, used all of his movement points for his abilities and then used an action to attack. So that was Boba. Great activation there. We've got an elite Jawa. Looks like he's going to take a pot shot at this gangster. Um, smart to attack with the Jawa first. Does one damage. Um, has to use a surge to pierce to get damage. Um, but that way he knows that his Hondo will be able to kill that uh, gangster without leaving it at a very low health for one of Director D. Well, for IG to take out. Although I think IG is most likely going to be going after BT here. Uh, so it looks like we had a pass from Director D, and now Hondo is moving five spaces, right? One, two, four, I'm not sure. Oh, it looks like he played worth every credit to move seven. So going to attack Boba here. Now, this is interesting. So attacking Boba, he's going to trigger Let's Make a Deal. Most... Almost 90% of the time, I would say you should never, ever pay Hondo victory points. Just because four victory points is such a huge swing. And you're most likely just going to lose the figure that you're trying to save anyway. So, but Boba here is literally too big to fail. Like, if Director D loses Boba... Um, 
he's going to be in a really tough spot to win this game. So I think, and he, since he's ahead, I think this might actually be one of those times where you pay. And he is going to pay two points here to Tuca. Still leaving him in the lead, but definitely narrowing that lead significantly to 21-20. to 20. Um, And of course the problem with uh, Hondo and paying Hondo is that your opponent who's playing Hondo and attacking can then do something like play Element of Surprise or Tools for the Job after you've already paid him uh, and throw off your math. But since both of those cards have been played already, I think we're pretty safe. And there is a triple block for Boba. Pretty much going to stop all the damage. Yep. So zero damage from this Hondo attack. But definitely worth it to get those two victory points for sure. So it looks like we are at the end of round three, I believe. And another gangster is going to appear, but this one is not going to do any damage to anybody. Um, oh, but the other gangster is going to hit BT for two damage. Oh, no, excuse me, the Jawa there. He's kind of hidden behind that number. So this gangster is going to move out. Uh, it's being controlled by Tuka, I believe. Or, or Director D was controlling it. So initiative going back to Tuka here in round four. Still very close game. Uh, Director D's got both of his queen pieces still alive. Uh, but Tuka doing quite well on the victory point front. Just needs to maybe kill one of these queen pieces and a couple gangsters. So Tuka activating Hondo. Attacking Boba. Now this one is a little tougher. Do you pay here? Um, because paying will put Director D in the uh, behind Tuka and victory points. But uh, yep, he is gonna pay. So going down to 19, putting Tuka at 22. But hoping that he's not gonna take a ton of damage. Looks like he's going to be taking two damage from this attack anyway, which would have been four. So, so now Director D is going to need to take out BT1 before he activates. And the question is, who is better at doing that? Is it IG or Boba? And I feel like IG is the correct answer because then you can focus Boba with 3PO. We got Honda running around all over the place here. Gonna move back to that nice safe corner there. So IG is activating first. And oh, it looks like Tuka might be out of cards in his command deck. Even though he was the one who played um, Shoot the Messenger. And has been playing a ton of strength cards. Yep, so Tuka's out of cards. IG and Boba doing a great job of stripping and dealing a ton of strain. And so now that's an automatic damage from Relentless. And now tools for the job here. So we're going to see three reds. Oh my goodness. That's going to be eight damage. And that is going to kill BT outright. Putting Director D back in the lead. 24 to 22. And now we can use the second attack to shoot at a gangster. Oh, that is not what you want to see. Um, so the gangster takes a strain from Relentless. And it's going to take two damage from the attack. So three damage total on the gangster. Uh, definitely just softened it up for Tuka to kind of steal it. Tuka activating R2. Looks like he's trying to protect uh, Hondo here from a Boba. And... 
So R2 activating, focusing Boba, who's only got four health left. And that would be a wild swing. That would put Tuka all the way at 35. So Director D cannot afford to lose Boba or IG here. This Elite Jaw is going to come down and looks like take a shot at this three health gangster. Yeah, a bit of a long shot for an unfocused Jawa. So, but he's not going to do any damage. So he's not going to help. At least not going to help Director D. And he's going to get to use Bargain. So that's nice. Um, and he gets two victory points. So he goes. He nets one victory point from that, going from uh, twenty-two to twenty-three. And that's a that's a fifty percent chance, by the way, that you net one victory point from bargain. I think it's like a one in three that you get nothing, and then it's a one in six that you lose a point. So bargain's definitely uh, good for you on the odds. But he leaves that Jawa out. Let's see what's gonna happen here. Gonna flamethrower Jawa R two and Hondo. And since Tuka's deck is empty, that means they're all going to take two damage from this flamethrower and weakened. I don't know if they're playing on any kind of time limit, but it would be interesting to see if he goes for R2 or the Jawa. So he's going to move twice. He's not going to attack this round. And he's going to use his wrist rocket on Hondo. Gets a nice three damage. Um, trying to play to the limit here. Hmm. Not sure. I think there's some confusion here about Boba and to the limit. Yeah, he only did a regular move action. So you can see the chat there. Um, by the way, both players playing very well in this game. Uh, quite enjoying it. So not going to be able to attack there. That might have thrown off uh, Director D's plans a little bit. So we've got R2 activating. Let me get rid of that card. For Tuka, gonna heal himself for one damage with repair. Oh no, I see what's happening. He's uh, using R2 as an example. Of course, R2 activated already. And he's gonna move Boba. Nice safe spot there. Now we're into the end of round four, I believe this was. And, uh, yep, unfortunately, with 3PO standing there, he's going to get taken out by those two gangsters who are going to deal two damage each. So putting Tuka back in the lead. And, oh, another gangster appears. Uh, right on top of Boba and deals him two damage. Uh, I think a Boba killing Boba here for Tuka would probably spell the end of the game. Uh, putting him at thirty-eight, you just need to kill a gangster. But Director D is going to have initiative. He's going to start off with Boba doing a flamethrower to do two damage to each of Tuka's figures there. That's going to take out the Jawa. It's going to go to 27. Tuka's got 25. Uh, he says he's using Wrist Rocket on Hondo, but he doesn't have line of sight from there because of the wall. Oh, but that they're going to count that as a kill. Director D going to 33. So what he actually should have done, he could have just wrist rocketed R2 
moved one space, and then shot at Hondo. And it actually would have been less risky because he wouldn't have had to deal with Lucky. And that's going to take out... Oh, that is a tabling. Wow. Yeah, he just took out all three of those figures in one activation with uh, Boba there. And uh, that was an awesome game. So we got to see Boba IG emerging triumphant against the double Nexus. Uh, great game. Super powerful stuff happening with Boba. And uh, managed to overcome, with some smart positioning I might add, the uh, awesome strategy that Tuka has come up with of uh, nine activation double Nexu list. And uh, yeah, that was the game. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, I hope glad to get this out um, before they change ICP for Season 2. I'm sure we can expect some uh, changes coming up for these figures. And definitely stay tuned. I will have more standard gameplay coming. A lot more standard gameplay actually on Vassal. And uh, we'll be putting that out. So thanks everybody for watching. I hope you have a great day.